Okay, so it's the day after. All the paint's dried nicely. And uh, I'm going to put this back together again. Uh, one of the jobs is setting the float level. And uh, what you're aiming to do, if you can see the, the float, which is in the um, up position at the moment, the needle, I'll just go and get a little pick to bring that down. I hope that isn't going to bode badly um, when it's in the car. I have, have some concerns that that uh, if the float's sticking like that right now it's going to be a problem for us. Okay, so that's the that's the float down and now the uh, the tip that I read was you make up a a um, an exact one quarter inch uh, wide strip that you can place here like that, and then you bring the float up until it until it seals shut. Which is there, and you can see the uh, the tab has to be bent down again. It comes up too high, so that's the adjustment I'm going to make. To um, get it absolutely exact, so I'm really, really thrilled with that. Measured it across from the hinge, so that's that step done. Can um, can now focus on getting everything else back together. So I've already um, the needle and seat came with its own washer, which I've already used. So that accounts for that one. Um, I have float bowl. So that gasket goes. So you can't see what I'm doing here. Just making sure that that fits properly. Looks a little bit small. Oh, that's okay. Just stretched over there. bit small eh? Let's just see how that feels when that goes on. Yeah, that's strange, eh? It um, doesn't fit. That's how it looks. So it's that needs work. I'll just soak this in a bit of oil for a while to make it a little bit more, a little bit more flexible. So just dump that in there. Um, what else have we got? Okay, so that belongs in here. And this um this screw. I um it's pretty uh it's pretty ordinary but I like it in a in a sense. It's the original screw, I think. 
it's um, the head of it's really eccentric and kind of off, off center. Just, just fighting a little bit. Come on, get in there. Okay, let me just get. I'll go straight to a screwdriver. It's going. Or has it? I just don't want to be cross for any. Oh no. It's just had a. Um, it's just had a little bit of paint on the threads. Now I'm going to put a little bit more adjustment on this than I actually need. Um, better to have some than none. Okay, that'll do me I think. That was the one that came off. Plastic. I'm not sure how I feel about plastic, but I'm not going to put it back on. This is the one I've got, it's fibre. Um, Need a little spanner for that. And I'm going adjustable. And you can see it's a, don't know whether you can see that, but I didn't manage to get any paint on that. Looks like it needs a little bit of lube. Um, okay. Got some oil here. It's hard to know when this bottoms out. What I think could be happening here is this kind of tapers and puts extra, yeah, that, that's loosened it. Let's loosen that right up. And do a little bit more off, back it off a little bit. And yeah, that's better. Now it's not so tight on the. Um, 
there's not so much resistance on that. Okay, I'll take it out. Not much of a turn, one turn. Oh, I'm much happier with that. Do a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Let's see how. Let's see how our oils. Um, let's see how our gasket's going. The other thing to do, maybe, is just to center it. And drop this down. Maybe something like that. Get that. Let's um, tighten that down. Okay, the threads definitely still work. I mustn't have. Um... Let's try again. not long enough. Okay. You'll recall when I pull it apart, um, it's not playing the game. You'll recall that when I pulled it apart there was no gasket here, it was uh, RTV. This is certainly not going to be satisfactory. I'm going to nip that up. Um, see if I can get a bit of crush into that gasket. Um, with a bit of crush, as you can see, I might then be able to loosen it off and um, loosen it off and put that gasket under this central nut.
Let's try that. Failing that, I need a thinner, a thinner washer. That's a definite no. Hmm. I need to think. Okay, viewers, I think I might have had a bit of a win. So what I did is I, um, I took that washer um, over to the uh, bench grinder and uh, I filed it down so it's, re it's reasonably thin. And uh, I think that's given me the clearance that I need to, uh, to get this on. Okay. Got a gasket all the way around. It's the carburetor cleaned, painted, ready for an install. one. Okay so for gaskets I like to use this aviation former gasket uh, it's a sealant liquid um, just painted on sparingly and uh, what that helps do is it holds um, it's non-setting so it, it remains a liquid but it um, it's just enough to fill some of these irregularities uh, and the other benefit is that it um, holds a gasket on for you. Yes, yeah, so you only need a little bit of this. That's probably a little bit too much, but and then that will go on there. Yeah, so it's not a glue. It's a um, just a sealant. Now I'll go and paint the other surface and we'll get that on. And I just um, I just pulled that gasket off. Strangest thing. It had, uh, if you remember, it had this handmade or homemade thing that was really restrictive and it already had a gasket on there so go figure Let's see if I can get you in there So if you put them on sort of like studs, I think that's the most effective way. Let's see what we've done there. It's just sort of now sitting there. Um, it's going to be a terrible camera angle. i just nipping those up. Notice that we haven't got any washers on there. Let's see if I've got a couple here. Okay, so new spring washers that's um it's getting ready to getting ready to rumble all right it's all back together that uh that was a bit of a pig of a job uh the reason being is that i hadn't put the the fuel line on the carburetor uh, before i installed the carb so that all had to come out. Um, 
but this is really Mickey Mouse. Uh, previous owners uh, fitted that tap there instead of at the bottom of the tank, um, and it's hard up against the the chassis rail there. So yeah, really quite tricky to to uh, get reinstated. Um, in the process of cleaning up my air intake, I thought of something. Thought I'd show you something interesting. So um, this is the air intake. It sort of goes up here, and it says on it, "Motor Invention Company, Patent Pending, La Crosse, Wisconsin." So this, I believe, this is a go faster piece of kit. It's got in there. It's got some veins that would have the effect of. Um, putting a spiral or a vortex in the uh, incoming airflow. So this is like, this is like a, uh, a vortex creator, which is gonna increase flow through the carb. Interesting, so I'm gonna put that back on. And there we have it, all back together, looking good. Um, what's next? I'm gonna put the radiator back together so um, I did want to did want to get cotter pins done here as you can see I've done some engineering safety wire around these two and uh, everywhere you look there's stuff that could be done right so that's that's what I'm going to do I'm going to get the four cotter pins and sort that out. And there you go, a couple of minutes work. Feeling much better about that. Okay, now for the, I might put the, let me think. The way the radiator came off was with all the hoses intact. Um, not sure what to do. I feel like loosely assembling everything um, and putting the housings on the front upper housing and the lower housing, putting them on uh, with the radiator in. Okay, let's try that. Okay, so this is the radiator. Um, all of this rusty, uh, rusty water or staining uh, has come from the overflow pipe so you can see it just it finishes there and clearly anything uh, that comes out is going to just drop straight onto the ground um, the other thing is this these are this is for the headlights it runs the acetylene gas through it you can see it's been hit by what I think is the fan. Uh, what I would say though, is I've been able to get down, um, block this, plug this, blow through there, and it, it does hold pressure, there's no leak. It's just a gouge, it's not a, hasn't been compromised. So I'm actually gonna rerun the headlights through that. I think that's far more in keeping. Um, and what I'm going to do now is just, I've got a little bit of black paint, I'm going to clean this up and, uh, and just paint any exposed areas. It's, you can see some corrosion happening up here too. So I'll, I'll brush that back and then hit it with some paint. Okay. Okay, so this is the underside. I've had a bit of a change of heart. Um, I'm going to give this the poor 15 treatment um, and up there as well. So that stuff, that stuff chases corrosion. It's really good. Um, yeah, so that's going to slow this job down because it takes so long to dry. It's an overnight dry again. So um, that doesn't, it's not the end of the end of the world. So I'll, uh, I'll hit some, hit that with some POR 15 and see how it goes. Okay, with most things related to paint, cleanliness is next to godliness. So um, I've got some acetone here. 
I'm going to give everything a good going over before I attempt to paint on some some paint. Yeah, it's pretty um, pretty dirty. Lots of lots is coming off, as you'd expect, I suppose. Okay, I'm just getting up up the top section here. Be, should be ready to go. Two light coats is a recommended um, approach. So to clean the rust off, I used a cloth which was soaked in some phosphoric acid. Phosphoric acid is yeah, commonly commonly known as rust converter. Yes, yeah, so this um, this paint goes on very well. You just don't need you don't need much at all for a, th a thin coat. get it onto that petcock. Okay, so just while that paint dries, uh, I'm going to put the fan back on. I've, I've actually started. Uh, for some reason, the uh, video didn't start, uh, but got the belt on there now. I cleaned the belt. Um, it's got a, that much sort of slippage, um, and some of you may remember from an earlier clip that this adjusting point this locking nut wasn't even done up and uh, the belt was completely loose so um, this time round I'm not going to have that mistake doesn't need to be too tight okay and there's a problem um, what I'm going to do is I'll loosen this off which I'm going to need some needle nose pliers for. Yeah, how easy things can go wrong, huh? So, jeez, oh you tighten this up. Hmm. 
Hmm. Really not a fan of how this has all been done, if I'm honest. It's just a bit of a spaghetti dog's breakfast here. Um, so I must remember to uh, put some ATF in here. That's going to go there. That's too close. I really want. I might take this. Oh, you can't really see. What I'm doing is taking that screw off. I'm going to take that completely off. What I'm doing is trying to get this wire off. I'm going to need two hands, Pete. Maybe my right hand would be more. Maybe a different method altogether. So I kind of want to turn that that way and go in this way. No, it's not going to help. But I'm onto something there with getting that wire brought in behind, so the um, so the belt can't get a hold of it. Oh, sorry. Like that. And then how does this go with the timer? Yeah, I think that's going to be fun. I need, I definitely need both hands here. Okay, that's looking good. <clears throat> so we've got the wires now. This is the wire that I was worried about. It's neatly tucked in behind there. Uh, no fear of it getting chewed up by the fan. This one here, this one is a potential issue as well. So the issue with this is it comes through here like that. I'm going to undo that and then if I route it under this one, it should, it should come better out of the way, would be my thought. Feast your eyes on that. Safely rerouted. It's well out of the way of that belt. Beauty. Uh, I'm going to sit and think around. Um, actually, this this radiator can probably go back in as is because it's the bottom of it that's uh, the bottom of it's been wet. Slightly slightly dry looking. As long as I don't um, touch that as I'm putting it back in, which isn't likely. While I got it out though, this brass, um, brass could do with a good bit of steel wool and some brasso. I'll keep cracking on that, you don't have to see that, it's pretty boring. So this is brasso work. Um, quadruple O steel wool. Gives you an idea if you can see that there's some stains there. Um, I literally just go round and round in circles. Um, 
you just got to put the effort in. It um, it does take a little bit of work, a bit of elbow grease. The um, the brass work looks like it needs um, redoing every six weeks ish. I think it just needs a, a bit of a going over. Okay, and that's the finished product. You can see pretty decent reflection, nice and shiny. All right, so it's just placed there at the moment, no, not bolted down. But what a difference having the the brass all polished before it goes in. Looks great. So um, to do now is just get the hose kit together. Um, I'll get a fresh pair of gloves on. They're actually, um, they do have, they have some plastic coating on the outside. So I'll leave that on as long as possible to protect it from getting my filthy mitts on it. I've run out of battery. So uh, just gonna charge up. I'll make a little bit of progress and, and bring you back. Okay, we resume. So, um, the radiator is loose, loosely, loosely in there. Not that you tighten these up, um, bottom them out. They've got a spring in there that helps suspend the radiator properly. Um, so, yeah, these, these are on loose. I'm just in the process of tightening up, just in the process of tightening up the housing. Uh, if we come around this side, we've got everything ready to kind of cinch up. This housing's on, new gasket, sealant. Interestingly, when I was scraping the gasket off, I scraped the engine number off. It was stamped onto a plate, which looks like a super glued on there. Um, so yeah, finish this housing. Um, because these are all new, uh, they're very easy to, to manipulate on there. Um, and I'll, I'll try and set you up and, and show you that when the time comes. So yeah, this is one of the more enjoyable, fairly straightforward jobs. Um, I'm not swearing and cursing. I'm using a spanner because I can't find the 5 8 socket. Um, so yeah, there's a slight amount of joy in easy jobs. Straight. Yeah, I gave that a lick of paint, as you can see. I'm just going to peel this um, plastic off. Hands are clean. Yeah, something like this, I think. Equally down this way, you aren't seeing this other end, but I'll quickly show you there. So that pipe, that transfer pipe, is exactly the right length between the out the outlet and the inlet, whichever way you want to think about it. That's the outlet, that's the inlet. Um, so literally just slide those up, slide that one down, and uh, the next thing to do will just be to bring these on here. I'll fight all the way, don't worry. Uh, especially if you're trying to do it one-handed. So I'm going to do it two-handed. Yeah, you think it's undone enough, but it's safer so slightly. Okay, so... So, something like that is going to work for me. Something like that. 
that. Okay, come on. It's something like that. Yeah, changed my mind. I think this orientation's better. It's um it's gonna be harder to reach, but they look they look much better. Out of the way. Sweet. In fact, now I don't like these. I want that around down the bottom. I'm gonna do that too. I'll bring you back when I'm done. Okay, job is done. What do you reckon? I reckon that is looking pretty trick. So we've got new um, new cotter pins in here. So, um, those those nuts have been tightened down to when they bottom and then backed off one and a half turns, and that enables you to still have a little bit of play in your rad. Like I said, there's a spring under that cup. Um, wow, I'm really pleased how far I got and that's going to be the end of this um, episode so let me bring a light in uh, don't have one damn try that that's better so um, that's looking really good uh, I need to put some fuel in and check for leaks that's one thing I haven't done yet um, I'll let you know if there's any issue. Shouldn't be, shouldn't be a problem. I tightened up appropriately. Yeah, every uh, every gasket's got sealer, so that's got sealer. Um, there's no gasket there. It's just a air intake sealant on those as well. Um, it is better, actually. I have not put a cotter pin on that yet job to do all right but that's going to wrap up this episode thanks very much for watching and we'll catch you next time